you know, it's, it almost makes it, you know, you can get spoiled with this new tool, you know, so I got to keep the reins in, keep the, the regiment down, you know, I still go, try to go through like land watch and apply all, all the measures to, to get to that point to find the submarkets. But yeah, it's, it makes it super easy. My goodness. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, definitely like it's, it's not the cheat code, but it is the baseline to your research. I, I was talking, talking to Ari about this earlier today. It's like, obviously you need to be doing your own research. You need to, you can't just completely trust the data, but just having this data in one place completely organized, it, it's revolutionary in terms of like a starting point. Um, just helps you find demand extremely fast. Yeah, I saw Andy Barlow just posted in Wins like he listed a property last night and took a cash offer today. I think that's just unbelievable, you know. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Maybe you should have waited a couple of days. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've been conducting I've been conducting some bidding wars lately. <laughs> yeah, sorry. We yeah, went from uh, yeah, fifteen thousand asking, and it went all the way up to forty five. Oh my goodness! Yeah, hold on one wow. second. Yeah. Good for you. Those those are the most exciting ones. Yeah, I I bet. How many parties were interested? Okay. There was like uh, five well, different yeah. buyers agents contacting me. Nick, capital N. Wow. And then the number one. And then two prime acres with the capital P. And then the back side of the end. Hey, Nick, do you mind uh, muting yourself? Okay. And now uh, let's go still with the password option. I guess once you did that, he's going to be able not to get any. Uh, Red errors on the username, right? Yeah, it still I'm shows go ahead one or more fields but, uh, filled out incorrectly. Please check your entries and try again. And that uh, highlights. Somebody say something if, if Nick's in the chat wanting to talk. I'm just going to wait a few minutes for everybody to, to funnel in and, and I'll get started. Kind of with like a a walkthrough of the processes I'm using to utilize this tool to its best extent. So we'll just kind of walk through everything, go over some some market selections, and then I'll kind of leave like the last half of the call for open discussion and any feedback from people that that are using the tool. It is a work in progress. We have the data. I just want to make sure. We're analyzing it the best way possible. I've tried to, to add as much filters as we could, as much ways to break it up and compartmentalize it as possible. But, um, you know, it, it's just me that that's coming up with these ways to analyze it. So if you guys have input, um, leave it for the end and, and let me know and, and we can make some improvements. What's up, Ari? Where'd your cat go? Bro, I got three of them running around. They're here somewhere. Thanks for all your hard work on this, man. Yeah, yeah. I'm super excited to finally get it out. I mean, I've been working on this for months, and I've had a lot of trouble with it, but <laughs> finally got it rolling, and still a work in progress, but it's it's working well so far. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Are the counties that are missing, are they sporadic or are they of uh, a certain space? So, so we're missing, I think we have like 2,700 counties, I want to say right now. And so the missing ones either had like horrible MLS data. Um, so like maybe it was a non-disclosure or the MLS just didn't report the data and it was all skewed data. Um, we, we got rid of it 
in that way. Like we wanted to provide you guys with the most accurate data possible. So when we saw stuff that was extremely skewed, uh, we, we, we removed it. We're working on bringing on more. I think we're gonna bring on 200 more counties that we were having trouble with. Um, but but the remainder, you know, there, there's there's problems with those counties in, uh, in terms of data that, reporting. They're spread throughout different states. Right. Okay. That's the other thing. Yeah, I think we're missing the whole state of Wyoming. Um, and it, it makes sense because because Wyoming's non-disclosure, um, Wyoming's out of style out of the modern times so <laughs> it makes sense that it's doesn't have accurate data thanks i was surprised to see that shasta county california was missing i just saw that today yeah yeah we're, we're working on on bringing that one too are, are you local to shasta no i'm east coast but i'm Former Californian, so there you go. caught my eye. Yeah, I'm actually headed out there next week to go to the lake. Super excited. All those lakes are full right now. Beautiful place. Yeah. <laughs> all right guys so i'll go ahead and get started this is all recorded um so we'll, we'll be sharing it with you guys um if you guys want to pop off at any point it'll be recorded and, and uploaded i think we'll upload it to youtube but uh if you guys don't know me my name is rylan loader i'm not sumner healy this is just a zoom account but uh sumner and i have been working on this market analysis tool for the last three to four months um, and basically we found a way to gather land data specifically so we were able to find a way to exclude all housing data and, and funnel down to land only and pull all of the the sales data for sale data under contract data and pull it on the monthly basis in a timely manner and we were able to do that and now we've organized that into a software tool and organized it so that we can filter out um kind of the the criteria we like in terms of, of markets um in terms of like sell-through rates uh inventory and just the the trends over time so so we look at trends from one month to three months and then current pending trends um, so this is all MLS data that we've gathered. We've organized it in this tool and um, we've opened 50 seats uh, for access to this tool. So some of you have already purchased this tool. You guys are subscribers. You guys are locked in. Uh, some of you haven't purchased the tool. So I'm just kind of kind of leave this call open to, you know, like helping you understand the platform, showing you the platform, choosing some markets and showing you the methods I'm using with the tool to, to find the best markets. So some of you, some of you are new, some of them, some of you have been using the tool. So people that have been using the tool, feel free to give any feedback that you have. Uh, I prefer you, you give that feedback at the end. Um, I'm just going to go over everything in the beginning. I'm sure I'll answer a lot of questions um, as I, as I work this tool. Um, so yeah, we've got 10 spots left so if, if one of you guys would like to to join you can go ahead and and click on that link in the chat um let's see what that link is the landinvestor.co slash market and it'll take you 
to the landing page. Am I sharing my screen? Yeah. Okay. You guys can see the landing page? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. No. Yeah, so you oh, can go okay. ahead. Okay. You can go ahead and lock in your spot at this page. Um, you should just follow, okay. follow this link, reserve your spot, and you can get locked in and we'll get you access tonight. So let's go ahead and, and, and open the tool. Can you guys see it? Yes. yes. I'm going to stop sharing my video so it just streams through correctly. So once you're logged in, you'll have the LEA monthly market analysis. Um, it's kind of like our, our forefront. You can go ahead and click on this. And we have multiple tables for multiple different uh, acreage ranges. So STR stands for sell-through rate. So if you don't know what sell-through rate is, it is the number sold divided by the number available. So if 10 sold in the last six months and there's currently 10 properties available, you have a 100% six month sell through rate. So I just want you guys to, to understand that before we start analyzing these markets because uh, you need to understand what sell through rate is in, in order to understand what exactly I'll be doing. So we've gone ahead and calculated all these rates. And then we've also included the, the actual inventory amounts for for sale and sold and under contract and, and put it across all of our date ranges, one month, three months, six month, and 12 month. So in addition to that, we've broken in, up our data into acreage ranges. So we have sell through rate analysis of 0 0.2 to 100 acres. We have 0 0.2 to one acres, one to two, two to five, so on and so forth. And then we have like an aggregate data table, which has all of this in, in one single table. And then we have like a, a different view, which is also helpful. So I'll just start out with, uh, let, let's start out with the, the five to 10 acre range. So this is all of our county data within the five to 10 acreage range and all of the, the sell through analysis for all of those counties. So we can click on it. And as you can see, we have a table. We have state as the first tab and then the, the county within that state in the next tab. And we have all of the data and it just adds up. So we have hundreds of thousands of data points. So it's pretty cool. So like this is our unfiltered data set and we're gonna try to make sense of this. So if you look to the right, we have different filters we can add to our data set. So our pending STR is our pending sell-through rate. So pending is also under contract. So in the MLS, when, when somebody goes under contract to sell their property, it gets populated in the MLS and shows up um, across all platforms. So let's say there's 10 properties currently for sale and three of them are under contract that would be a 30% pending sell-through rate. So I like to see at least a 10% pending sell-through rate. Um, for this case, I'm going to put in 15%. So to do that, you click 0.15, which is 15%. And then we'll just uh, leave this maxed out at 300. And I also want to see like a consistent six-month sell-through rate. Uh, I, I like to, I think six month is the most beneficial. Um, one month doesn't always populate quickly. Um, sometimes properties go pending and it takes a couple of weeks for the realtor to mark them as sold just because people are lazy. So I don't like to use the one month in my opinion. Um, I think six month is a, a good indicator of whether or not it's, it's a, a moving market. So um, I like to see 100%. So to enter that, I'll just click one. So I'm setting at least 100%, at least 15%. And 
I don't want to see like zero available properties. I'd like to see around like like five available for the five to ten range. Like I I do want some amount of of inventory going on. I don't want like a dead market. So let's set our our minimum at five, and let's set a maximum at like twenty five. So I don't want more than twenty five five to ten acre properties within that county. That just be kind of overflowing, in my opinion. Um, what else can we do? I think this works for now. So we've whittled down our list significantly. Like, you can drag down, and we can see. You know, we've we've significantly narrowed down this list. Let's keep looking. What I like to do is I don't like to compare like this county to this county. I like to compare within a state just because like it, it, it doesn't make sense to compare um, counties in completely different locations in the country. Um, there, there's so many different factors that affect counties. And I've realized comparing within a state is is the best way to go about like choosing your markets. So let, let's take, for example, Georgia. So, so we can go in the, the right filter and type in Georgia, enter and select it. So let's only look at Georgia data. So a, a cool thing you can do is you can filter your sell through rate percentages. So we have our sell through rate percentages here, and then we have like the actual inventory numbers over here. So I can filter to the highest turnover rates within Georgia. And right here, we've got Houston County, Houston County, Georgia. So our, our pending sell through rate is 20%, one month, 40%, three month, 140%, which is crazy. 170% six month. 291 year. So it pretty consistent demand throughout the year, which is which is a good indicator to me. And then we can look at the actual numbers. So we have 10 for sale, we have two pending, four sold in the last month, 14, three months, 17, six months, 29 in the last year. And then over here, which is another cool thing we added, is we've pulled the amount of ownership records for every single county. So the number of out-of-county owners, so people that have mailing addresses outside of the county is 1,021. And then the out-of-state owners, so people with mailing addresses out-of-state, there's only 371. So this is helpful in terms of figuring out how much mail you're actually going to juice out of this market. So likely you're going to get the most mail out of Gordon County, Georgia. But I mean... A, a small number doesn't always steer me away from mailing that county because there's still money to be made. You're just going to have to spend more time picking more markets. So it's safe to assume like you'll get around maybe 1,300 uh, mailers, but if you're filtering and, and removing duplicates, it might go down to like 800. So that's a cool tool we added. Um so I'm going to go ahead and, and add to a list Houston County, just because these numbers make sense to me. Um, it, it has, it, it appears that to have the most demand within the state of Georgia right now for the five to 10 acres range. So what I do is I will create a Trello page that tracks all of my notes on markets. So this is an example page. I'm not going to show you my actual market research page. Don't want to give away my my counties, but um, I will show you an example of, of what I do. So we just chose Houston County, Georgia. So I'm going to add this. And we can click on it and we can take notes on what is going on with Georgia. So we just did our preliminary research with the Leah market analysis tool. So I'm going to take notes on, on what I found. So tracked five to 10 acres. Um, 20% 10 
pending STR. And then we had 170% uh, six month STR. <laughs> and currently for sale. So I'm just going to leave those notes for now. And I'm going to open back up the tool and we can further analyze this county. So let's say we're, we're interested in, in Houston County, Georgia. We can go back and we can look at another acreage range and look up that county, or we can use the aggregate data. We, we can start off at looking at like 0 0.2 to 100 acres just to see what that overall trend is for the entire county of just all land. Actually, we can look at that in the aggregate data. So let's let's open the, the vertical view aggregate data. And we can look up the county in here. So look up Houston, Houston County. So we have all of our data points for the entire county within here, if you keep scrolling. It's pretty crazy how granular you can get with it. So let's look at 0 0.2 to 100 acres. So we have 140 for sale in this entire county. Um, this appears to be a bad, bad data point. Um, That's Alabama rather than- uh, Oh, Georgia. okay. That's why, <laughs> that looked weird to me. <laughs> Thanks for catching that. Okay, this makes more sense. Okay, Houston County, Georgia, 0 0.2 to 100 acres. We got 110 for sale, 24 pending, 11 sold in the last one month, 65, three months, six month, 94. So we're almost at that 100% sell through rate for the entire county, which is pretty solid. One year at 155. So overall, it's looking like a strong county. It's looking like this turns over pretty quickly. Um, we can look at what's making up for most of the inventory right now. So we can see 0 0.2 to one acres. There's 42 properties for sale. And it, it doesn't look like they're selling as quickly. I mean, there's, there's still a pretty strong sell through rate on these, but there is um, about 70 more properties across the rest of the acreage ranges. We can investigate 0 0.2 to 1, but I never mail properties that low. It, it's very rare for me to mail subdivisions that low. I usually go three to four acres and above. So we can just look at the sell-through rates for each acreage range. We can look at the quantities and you can just, you can look at this for days and, and go super in depth with it if you want. But just looking at our 0 0.2 to 100 acre sell through rates this looks like a strong county to me so i'm going to make notes on that and, and research further So I'm gonna open Redfin now and we can just like kind of confirm this data, confirm these, these properties are turning over. So something that sticks out to me is, is this kind of metro area. If I were to mail this, I'm probably going to only extract data in these rural parts. 
and it looks like a lot of that is that small acreage and, and like I was seeing for like 40 of those properties are 0 0.2 to one acres. So I'm probably just gonna steer clear of that acreage range. So we can see 108 for sale across all. You can look at sold in the last six months. <laughs> 95. So strong numbers. It's confirmed that the data is solid and, and we can start looking into individual properties. We can start looking at where these sales are actually making up the county. So as you move through the pages in Redfin, you just want to kind of look for where are the hot spots within this county. And I'm also looking for real listed properties. I don't like to see a bunch of off-market listings populating our data. I wanna see stuff that was actually listed with a realtor. And then I wanna see like quick sale times. So we can use Redfin to look at sale history. So this was listed in March, sold in May, like fast turnover. If you see this across the board, it's it's a solid county. So. The next step from here is like diving deep in, in choosing your sub market. So maybe you're going to extract three plus acres from this area. That's probably what I'm going to do. I'm probably going to steer clear of this city. But like we did our preliminary research. This county is selling at a strong, rapid rate. So the next thing to do is, is choose your, your sub region and then price that. Look for homogenous pricing. So then you just make notes like Redfin strong um, find subregions. So what's cool about Trello, like you can drag these. So I have market research. I have like a tab to save a search and data tree. And then like if the data is exported, I can move it here. Maybe I'm iffy about the location. I'll, I'll put it in maybe. And then if it's just a no, I'll throw it in here. And then we just, we have one place to take all of our notes. So let's go back to the tool. Let's jump into 40 to 100 acres. And... I want to look at Virginia. Let's look at this time. Let's look at 30% pending. Let's look at 100%. Uh, 100% six months. Okay, so we can start looking at this data. So I, I really don't like to go after low inventory areas. Like I want it moving to some extent because if there's only like one, 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 like it's, it's probably a dead county, not a lot of ownership information. I, I like going after stuff, you know, at it with more inventory and higher sell-throughs. So we have eight for sale, nine sold in the last six months. Like that's something we can look at. So that's Bedford County. Buckingham. Five for sale. Six in the last three, seven in the last six months. That looks strong to me. One cool thing you can do is you can right click on any county you just don't want to look at, or you can or you click on it and you can just exclude it. You can get rid of it. So we can keep excluding data until we like narrow down our list. We can also 
remove columns if we want to. So say we don't want to look at pending, we can just exclude. <clears throat> so this just narrows down everything and like kind of narrows our, our minds while we're researching. And if you remove stuff, you just have to refresh the page to, to bring it back. So right now I'm seeing this, the strongest with high inventory is Buckingham and, and Bedford. Kind of have like similar numbers. Buckingham has a stronger one month, but it doesn't really matter. Six month Bedford, Buckingham, Buckingham, just a little better. Really strong one year. So I'm, I wouldn't steer clear of only choosing one. I would probably look at both of these. So Bedford and Buckingham, I would add to my Trello. So let's go back to the aggregate data. Let's look at, let's look at Buckingham. So 33 for sale in total, three months. Sell through eight. I think, wow, that's strong, super strong. One year at 97. It's just, it's strong all around. And you can go ahead and look at these acreage ranges, see if everything's consistently selling. Um, another thing I would want to do is go on Redfin, see what the, the turnover prices are at. So try to stick within your budget or, or stick above um, cheap valued property. So maybe these, these, one to two acres are, are selling at like eight thousand dollars you're going to want to increase your acreage so maybe you'll go after like five and above so you can do all your redfin analysis from there um but yeah I mean, we, we compartmentalize this data and then overall trends are, are looking strong so that's definitely a strong county you can also look at bedford and, and check that um So I, I won't go ahead and, and do more Redfin analysis. Um, I'll just show you some more tables. So we have 0 0.2 to 100 acres. So, I mean, this is the best tool to analyze entire markets, find the best whole market as itself. So maybe you don't want to spend a whole lot of time compartmentalizing and like picking subregions, you just need to crank out one county all at once, shotgun it. I would recommend you this tool. And we have the same filters over here. Um, we can also set minimums on out of county and out of state owners if we want to. We can set uh, amounts of available listings and amounts that sold in addition to these percentages. So you can look at what the scale is of, of the inventory. So that's another good way to, to analyze data and find good markets. So maybe you want to look at like 50 to 100 available overall, then you can add that in there, throw it in here. So super cool stuff. I mean, like you, you get to the point very fast. What I like to do is just build up a huge list in this Trello board and dive deep on it for three to four hours um, once a week and, and just choose my markets, pull the data, export it, and then just have notes on file of, of what you researched. So another thing we're looking to do with this data is, is we are restricted to like the ranges. So what I wanna do is create some type of like sliding range of like, hey, I want to look at one 
to 10 acres. I, I want to have that ability. So we're working on putting that into this. Um, so we're going to have like a, a sliding range option instead of just being limited to our one to two acreage range and our two to five. I want to be able to like customize that acreage range. So we've been working on that. Um, what else are we also working on? We're working on adding more filters to the side. These filters are, in my opinion, the most useful, but I, I do want to add more filters in the future. We've just been having uh, some troubles with Tableau and we're working with the, the development team to add more. But right now we're, we're maxed out at this, but I think we'll be able to add more. Rylan, I have a question for you. Go ahead. Logging into Tableau is like solving a Rubik's cube. Every every time I go to log in, it's like I've got to recreate the wheel on this authenticator stuff. Really? Yeah. Like, how do I? I I bought this thing the other day. I got in there once, and I can't get back in. Which authenticator did you use? I have no idea. Okay. Let me, so are you on a PC or a Mac? I'm on a PC. Okay. So what I, I'm going to log out and log back in. Yeah, yeah, I had that trouble too. And I went to the email and logged back in through there and it worked. I, I, yeah, I've done it a couple of times. Okay, okay. That Microsoft Authenticator seems to work for me, man. Uh, that would be kind of a nightmare. I could see. Yeah, I personally haven't had any issues since I got in. It just asked me for the same, just like this, same yeah. password every single time. Basically, so this is yeah. this is the authenticator I use. I think it's the one personalized to the the Windows system. So I just click verify, and it like scans my face and it lets me in. All right, I'm I'm not trying to hijack your meeting here. I thought the answer was simple. And uh, like, who who do I like? Here, who do I contact after this meeting to get this fixed? Contact me. Just just shoot me an email or a Discord, and I'll help you out. Okay. Yeah. Hey Jay, try using that link I just sent in the in the chat right there. That might help you out. Because I was having the same issue, and I just I used that link right there, and um, there's less hoops you got to go through. Okay. Thank you. Yep. That's what I that's what I did, John. That helped me. Exactly. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Thanks you for throwing that in there. Yeah, because if you just go to tableau.com, then you have to like sign in, and then there's like all these different settings you got to go through. But if you just use that link right there, then you just sign in, and boom, it's right there. <laughs> Let me know if it works, Jay. Yeah, works well. Yeah. All right, guys. So I'll just leave some time for for any questions you have. Maybe you're you've got the tool and and you have questions for for how to analyze data, or you have any feedback on on what we can implement. I'm all ears. I have a question. Um, um we always are having to enter the filters, and I was trying to explore with that. Uh, there's a button up there that says save my customizations. Can you explain that one? Save your customizations? Yeah, that up above. The view. Yeah. View original. If you highlight. Yeah. What is this? So I haven't used this yet, but I believe you can like save your filters. So if, if you want to look at 30% pending, on your data like if you just set up all these filters because you have all this criteria you like i think you can save this so we can name this 30 percent pending yeah i'll say going on it's a 
I think finally the year after I got out, went back and came back, it was gone. So let, let's test this. I just saved okay. it. So let's exit out and go back. So we're at 0 0.2 to 100 acres. Okay. Maybe that might be what's wrong. I'm not in the right uh, acreage spot. It saved it specific to that. Yeah. So I just clicked on that save search and it should populate 30%. Yep. Okay. So any any filters you create and you can save that and quickly open it if you want. It's, but I, I believe it only saves for each table. It's each not table. Work. Okay. That's what it is. I didn't click on the same table. Okay. Cool. An interesting way you can use it um, that I, I kind of intend to do is I'll, um, I'll choose the counties or get those counties filtered down to like a mailing that I'm doing. And then I'll save that and, and label it after that mailing. So I can kind of come back to it and refresh my memory of like when I mailed it, uh, if I date it or anything like that. Two questions for you, Ryan. Go ahead. Um, the penny sell through rate is that basically just red fins under contract? Um, yeah, so it's it's under contract divided by for sale. <laughs> okay, so yeah, and then other question I had maybe this is sorry, I was on the line with data tree for the beginning of this, so I, I missed the beginning part of this, but is there any way to just export this to an Excel spreadsheet or something so you can kind of sort it yourself easier and better? So the whole reason why we use Tableau and why um, we've created the authenticator is so that you can't download the data. Like our concern was people just be able to download this and send it to everyone. So we use this platform so you couldn't download it and we tried to make it as perfect as possible to, to analyze the data, just like you would in Excel. So ultimately, like we're trying to recreate what you can do in Excel. And I, I think it's a little better than Excel, but no, there's no option to download just because we want to keep the data with, within the users. Can you at least allow, allow it to sort them by call? So like, let's say, for example, you did 30% sell through rate, you did 100% on the six month STR, you got whatever out of state. And then, so it's got 10, it pulls up and you're looking at it and it's got all these tabs across the top, depending on one month, three months, six months, but you can't sort those high to low afterwards. Can you at least do like a high to low on those if you're not going to make it available into a spreadsheet? Yeah, yeah, we, we do have that option. This one is glitching out for some reason right now, but let me show you. So let's say we, we did 30% pending. We can we can filter these high to low. So you can filter this percent high to low and it'll it'll populate by state high to low. Oh really? Mine doesn't do that. Maybe it's it's, so it's the the it, there's a bug with this table, the 0 0.2 to 100 acres. Okay. Every okay. other table should work. Okay. I'm gonna work on this right after. My apologies, guys. Um, every every other one should be working though. Yeah. See, we have that filter option. Yeah, that's better. Yeah, that's better. That's yeah, I'll cool. work on that bug right after this. That's cool that we're all looking at it together because everybody has different ways of seeing it. Yeah, there's there's tons of ways to analyze it. Hey man, question for you on this uh, vertical, that vertical mm -hmm. view that you had. Uh, I don't think I have that. Uh, how do I get access to that? Because that's what I really wanted to see. Uh, I'll I'll make sure you get access to that after the call. Does oh, does any right does everybody else have access to the vertical view? No. Okay. No. I no, do. Negative. No. Okay. I'll, so we good. we just developed this one today. So I'll make sure <laughs> it all gets That's added. It. Great job, by the way. This is really epic work. I just love it. 
Thank you. I appreciate it. I really, really do. Can I say one thing about the filters? <laughs> uh, the sliders, I don't know if it's even necessary. It's so easy to type. It's taking yeah. up space. And you want you're wanting to add more filters. I don't see, I don't like them. Maybe others do. <laughs> I just, don't I don't use the slide feature just because the, the data is so expanded. Yeah, I just yeah. just enter in your ranges. Right. If you took them away, you would get more real estate for uh, additional filters. Mm -hmm. How do you, how does that I'd like to hear what other people are saying? Do they like that slider? And, I don't really use it, to be honest with you. I, I I just look at the data, try to get as much out of it, and maybe filter it by, uh, you know, using that top-down filter deal up there. Um, I don't know what everybody else does, but uh, I really love that vertical thing that you were showing before. Um, the one question I have, Ralph, is uh, some counties just aren't appearing. Like Louisiana, I think there was one county. So maybe is that on, on y'all side or what? So some counties, uh, we we are cross referencing data across multiple sources, and some counties just have horrible data. So we had to remove remove um, some amounts. We're we're working on on building codes around bringing more on, but right now I think we're at like twenty six hundred counties. So we're working yeah. actively to try to get as much accurate data as possible, but we don't want to skew the data with inaccurate information. Uh, so Appreciate we had to remove some. Yeah, all right, makes sense. Yeah. There will be some, you just will find out if you know, MLS data is terrible. Yeah. It used to be a Remax agent a long time ago. <laughs> just some MLS is terrible. Yeah, and, and that's why it did take us so long to to develop this. Is there's there's so many problems with with MLS data, and a lot of it can skew results. So it's just a lot of like tracking and, and double checking and, and running code that re-extracts if there's an issue. It, it's a, a handful of code. We have thousands of lines of code that that's that's tracking all this. It's crazy. So ahead, what's Jay. our state look like? Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Jay. I have a question. You're muted. All right. I'm in Ryan. I'm in Ryan. So my there we go. My, my question for you is, did you so when you first loaded and started this meeting, you had a page with with all sorts of data broken out by different acreages. Did you create all of those and save them to that home screen? So if you look at at these tabs, we have LIA monthly market analysis. So it's just one in here. You click on it, it gives us the file with with all of these files. So July LIA monthly market analysis. Are those showing up? No. Okay. If you go into Explore, it should show up right here. Okay, so you're going to get the the vertical version out to everybody, or have give them access, and then you're going to work on the sorting on the the main one. Is that right? Yeah. So so far, I've got written down. Uh, figure out that filter problem, and then give you guys access to the the vertical feature. Okay. <clears throat> and the zip code. Or yeah, I, I I'll talk about that in a minute. Okay. We'll talk about the zip code project, but That's right now I want to want to go over any troubleshooting issues or, or any input you guys have for for making this better. Yeah, I saw something today that um, you might be interested in. So I was looking at a particular county, and um, you know the zero to one hundred acres, zero point two to one hundred acres showed you know pretty good pretty good trend. And as I started going into the individual buckets, um, they were fine until I got to 
the five to 10 acre buckets. And that county wasn't even there. It was completely gone. And interestingly, when I went to Redfin and I changed my filter to five to 10 acres, I was already on that county, already looking at, you know, filters. And I was at the smoke three to five, I think it was. And uh, when I changed the five to 10, it came up with nothing, right? Mm -hmm. But then when I refreshed the page, all of a sudden there was a lot of, a lot of data for that range. So Redfin burped when I tried to put that particular filter on that particular county for some reason. And it seemed to correlate with the missing buckets that you had in, in your system. So I'm just wondering, uh, I, I'm sure it takes hours now, maybe days to, to scrape all this data and get it in and, and, and put it in the system. Are you going back and double checking the data and validating looking for anomalies or you know what do you do at the end of the month? Yeah, we've been working on anomalies the last one month. So like we've had this this scraping tool um, for for quite a while. The trouble has been um, finding the best way to to um, check this data. So yeah, sometimes there, there's issues that arise with when we're cross-platforming and it, it gives us nothing. So um, in some instances, we had to get rid of it. So you're saying we have like a 0 0.2 to 100 for that county, but we don't have a five to 10. Yeah, all the other, all the other buckets were full, five to 10. And, and it wasn't the, the county, excuse me, in the five to 10 bucket range, um, the county didn't even appear. So there was no data at the county. It was like county didn't even exist. So, mm -hmm. but in all the other buckets, it was there. So that mm -hmm. was odd. Okay. I can definitely look into that. And what, which county did you say it was for? That was in uh, Davie County, North Carolina. Okay. Rylan, one thing I've noticed about Redfin and this bug is I encountered the same thing with this uh, scraper that I had built. Um, if if your code can zoom in and zoom out, it will correct itself. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah we. No, go ahead. Yeah, we we've implemented uh, stuff like that, like zooming in, zooming out. Sometimes there's big counties and doesn't work, so. Yeah, but we've been implementing all these different um, fail uh, run tests. Right on. Um, this may be an obvious answer, but uh, it's not completely obvious to me. Uh, this, what we're saying is a function of the entire price range of the market or um, are we gonna? Are you thinking about uh, dialing in like a slider for price? We were thinking about that. Just the data involved is going to be so extensive. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. to run price, you'd have to run price on every sold comp. So let's think about it. If so, mm. I think we have three hundred thousand data points for yeah. for this set, and that took us three days to compile that data. So no, I just mean a price range in the market. You know what I'm saying? Like a, a price. So like on market. average is selling at this price per acre. No, no. I just mean so like let's say you would go into Red and you would say, I want to see everything from uh five to ten acres selling between forty and two hundred thousand mm dollars. -hmm. That's all I'm talking. And I know that that may be a, <laughs> a lot of code to write, but uh, that's what I'm talking about. Uh, just to be clear, if that's too much, then I get it. But, uh, yeah, we, we looked into this. It would take like 30 days to, to run the code to, to make it accurate. It, it would take 30 days. <laughs> so 30 days we could, run it. <laughs> we could <laughs> maybe try to do it on an annual basis. I'm not sure how much that'll help. But that's something we were looking into, but it, <laughs> we'd have to have a computer running for 30 days. I have a curiosity. Mm -hmm. um, so like one of the 
one of the things I brought up in Discord and one of the things I'm still interested in is seeing this data uh, for July next month. So uh, I think it'd be really interesting to see metrics like, hey, um, I think it was Houston County, right? Houston County was 20% uh, pending sell-through rate last month um, when this was polled. And then this this month, it's um, it's 40%. You know, you have this indication that there's this 20% 20, uh, 20 increase. And I, I feel like having that uh, visibility, not necessarily going into Redfin and pulling out previous data, but just starting now, in the here and now, and saying, hey, this is active. Here are the active trends of the market and being able to see where maybe not just for pending, but you know, as one month or three month um, is updated, really understanding where the markets are going, so we can see if a market's downtrending or or upwards trending. Um, I don't know if that's something that's possible, but then having like some sort of indication, like visual indication of an up arrow or a down arrow, and just like saying, "Hey, this has gone up." Um, I think that'd be pretty cool. I, I don't know that it's entirely necessary because, I mean, there's you could probably you tell that story, tell that story just by looking at it, but um, I think it'd be an, an easy indication of where to look. Yeah, I think that's definitely a good idea. We we can we can definitely implement that. We can utilize this month's data and compare it to, to next month and create some type of visualization to show those trends. Yeah. So I'll I'll write that down. Yeah, it's like the major market, right? Larger and larger time frame. Yeah, I think it'd be cool to see that actually in terms of, so like starting, if you're starting in zip codes, just imagine that in a zip code and then imagine seeing like a, a graphic where you can compare the zip codes to the counties in the state and then the counties in that same state to the actual, like the entirety of the state to see where it's trending and having those graphics like laid out in front of you. I just see that as so powerful to just own, um, you know, own your decision-making a lot more in yeah. general there's a guy that does something like that um, for houses it's a, a site called housing alerts okay and, uh, he does a very you know in-depth analysis where he compares month to month and he make he uses sort of a stoplight thing you know red yellow and green yep to analyze trends over time so um his point has always been you know you don't you don't just sell because the market goes down this month right mm -hmm. and you don't just buy because it's going up this month you look at the longer term trend and i think that would be very useful here if we're comparing month after month after month and you're seeing you know you're starting to see things move a certain direction that's going to be very helpful yeah yeah the cqg has got something very similar to that for commodities for the market profile graph so you can just expand and collapse time frames and it really allows you to see value really really distinctly yeah and i think I think that same concept for sell through rate, like applying that to available and solds, if you were to see uh, like a little up arrow with like a 20 next to it to say this month there are, you know, 20 more sold or uh, for sale properties than there were last month, like right. th that as well could really shift where you where you decide you want to market. Um, so I don't know. I think that's really cool. I think that the tool in general is already a lot, is really useful. Um, I think there's definitely a point where you kind of like maximize um, productivity with it. And then you start getting so many features that you kind of fool yourself into thinking there's a perfect market out there. Oh, for sure. Yeah. We have to kind of, you know, understand that this is, <laughs> we're, we're really spoiled being able to see this. Yeah. I was, I was going to say the scary part about this is you just, we just went from having to find every single market that we feel is good and then going well you know i could justify this market with a seven percent sell through rate in a month and now you have all these markets that you kind of have to choose you can choose from and i think what it does is it creates this uh mentality where it's like i would never market to these other you know lower markets when money well, can be made there. There. yeah, yeah. Maybe, like really good there. deals so sure. and that's what i I see in Oklahoma, like a lot of the Oklahoma counties on this tool looks Dude. terrible, man. And uh... <laughs> thinking, it's funny you say that because I was thinking exactly the same thing. I'm looking at push and mm -hmm. I'm like, it looks like crap, man. But that could be used for our advantage, you know? Yeah. That's why that's why I recommend you you narrow it down by state and you compare by state because all of Oklahoma looks horrible. 
but Oklahoma is good. Like people are yeah. moving there. It's just the the way data is compiled for that state is going to be different than Colorado. So like you want to compare it within the state um, and, and don't just let like don't have a criteria of 100 percent sell through rate, like adjust that criteria based on what the whole state's doing. Yeah, so can you speak a little bit more to that idea of what you, what you mean exactly when you say that the, the data is being aggregated differently based on the state? So like Texas, is Oklahoma non-disclosure? No, it's disclosure. Well, there's there's parts of it that you need you need a specific license to see or an account with Redfin to see, but it's not. Yeah, like Texas it, like is hot. And the data doesn't show that, but I realized the best data to analyze Texas is the pending amounts because not every single sale goes through on the MLS. It's not going to show up on the MLS platform after it sells. Like some of those go through, but some don't. So like your most accurate market conditions are going to be that pending number because all of those are going to show up because they haven't closed yet. But since it's non-disclosure, they're not going to disclose the sale in some instances and i think oklahoma is a similar situation it may be disclosure but i think they have um i don't think they give access to the public on every single mls there still trying to figure it out but that's why i just go by state to, to analyze these i don't try to compare another state's county to another state's county it's like i, I only want to be working in one state at a time yeah, I think I think you put it really well the first time around too with like topography. Like I just can't compare North Carolina to Oklahoma. Um, I, I don't care if Oklahoma is more popular, which it's not, but even if it was, the topography in North Carolina just doesn't allow for me to compare the two. Mm -hmm. Yeah, North Carolina just got so much land. And it's just interesting how that state was, was subdivided. Like a lot of people in Florida bought up land in North Carolina back in the day and it ended up being worthless, but it was just like a huge speculation purchase for the state of Florida. So if you look at ownership records, you're going to see a bunch of Florida residents. And then like other places in the country, no, nobody owns land. It's, it's interesting. And that's just going to affect oh. how the market's turning. How, um, Going back to Jerry or somebody's question, how do we know that, uh, no, maybe it was Brent's question. How do we know that this is accurate information or that it didn't glitch or something else? One, and then two, what if Redfin or somebody shuts this down? I mean, and I'm just asking this seriously because if we start relying on this thing or, and we're paying this quarterly in advance and whatever, and Redfin shuts down and two weeks and says stop scraping this crap or changes something i don't know how that works right i don't know anything about it so just help me understand that those two things yeah so we do have backups in place we do have alternate data sources um, we're actually working on getting a, a license from a data source right now so that that's definitely something that that's been in our heads um and, and we're working on tons of backups we already have developed backups so what we have right now works and we, we have other options in the future if this method doesn't work okay okay yeah. and how is there anything in place like some sops for checking this monthly before it goes out to make sure like are we spot checking a certain percentage of it or something yeah yeah we're we're sorting through this data every month um we we have a, a week to look through it and adjust any changes so we we add tons of time to to look through this data um and you know like when you when you look at these numbers you analyze these numbers like this is just your starting point so like you don't want to just choose your county after looking at those numbers like you do have to do your own research in addition to that and make the ultimate decision i wouldn't rely on the software to make the final decision it's like this is your base point like every everything's organized to to work off this base point but you need to look at redfin and you need to look at zillow to see if hey 
were these properties all actually listed or were they off market sales? And you can quickly determine that when, when you look at the, the sold comps, like, hey, half of these were off market sales. There's actually no real demand. Um, we actually have a 50% sell through rate, not a 100% sell through rate. So like this, this tool is a baseline. It's not the cheat code. It, it's, it's your baseline. Agreed. Thanks. Yeah. The data yeah, is only source. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I was it's uh, it's thing. it's cross sourced. So so we're pulling from from multiple different methods um like to get the most accurate data it's not just one source yeah that makes sense and this is just the first iteration right i mean uh it's it's coming out of the gate pretty strong in my opinion maybe i'm a little biased but uh yeah yeah i mean this is the first go it's already insane like from what what i've seen in my business like i have I've chosen the best markets I've chosen since I began and I've done it in, I don't know yeah, how much crazy. percent of time. Right, Tom? Just incredible amount of time saved. Anyway, fellas, uh, great stuff. See you on the flip side. Appreciate it, Jerry. So I want to get on the topic of zip codes now. So we've figured out this tool and we want to go to the extent of pulling zip code data. And this would be like truly revolutionary in my opinion. I think we can do it. We're, we're working on it right now. But it's it's going to be the same format. We're going to make all these changes we just talked about, but we're going to add zip codes to the mix. And it's just going to be crazy choosing markets at that point, because then you can just pick sub markets. And what I've realized, zip codes generally uh, trade at the same price per acreage. Um, so, so we're going to add this on top of that. It's going to be an upsell. I'm, I'm not sure what the pricing is going to be on it yet, but is that something you all would be interested in? Yeah. I think. It'd be... I mean, yes. Short answer, yes. yes. I think it'd be really cool to be able to, I know this might be making a little bit more systematized in terms of how you sell this to the people who already have access, but in in a way or another, like giving access based on like how many zip codes you'd like to buy into would be an interesting concept so that you're not just giving everybody every zip code. Not, not that I'm trying to limit anything, but like for it, for someone who's trying to maybe not spend a certain amount or something like that. Not that I'm, you know what I mean? I, I, I don't know. Just a concept so that I could be like, okay, I want to spend this, I want to spend my credits or how much ever, however, however, however much it costs on, say, these 20 sub markets. Um, if, if it's, I don't know the outland or the, the price and if, it, if it's outlandish or not. I mean, you know, doing like a couple deals at this point, I'm not really certain. Um, the return, but I can already feel the return in time. So I'm only, I'm only just get going, getting going. I don't know for what that's worth. Right on. I think like the use case I see for it is sure you can find a, a county with a good sell through rate, but you do have to to narrow that down pretty significantly if you want to maintain good returns in your business it's like I, I don't always just pull one entire counties with the data i'm pulling like two-thirds of it maybe a third of it and i i do use zip codes a lot of the time in data tree so i like just considering my history of pulling zip codes i think it makes sense to to do it in this way i don't know why um pricing works out that way but like in rural markets with similar topography it's usually trades at the same price for years like you found your homogenous pricing 
once you get the zip code. Yeah, it's got everything I said. <laughs> Honestly, um, I think it I think it really is valuable to see all that data. It's interesting though because you can get it from Redfin too um, by pulling the sold comp. Um, I just think your tool, since it's pulling from different places, will probably be more accurate. <clears throat> Well, I think um, just to chime in here that, um, you know, it'd be great to have the zip code data, it'd be great to have subdivision data, it'd be great to have, you know, uh, the more granular data that we could, but, um, you know, keep it simple. I think you're just getting launched here. Um, you've indicated already that there's some glitches you got to take care of and things you got to work out. And, you know, Redfin could pull the plug at any time. If you ever tried to scrape data off of Zillow, they changed their they change their platform like monthly and it's so frustrating because every time you get uh, something that works it doesn't work in a month or two so you know i i just be cautious about trying to expand too much and and trying to upsell it and and you know make promises until we're really so you know solid on just the the county data the county data is pretty awesome just to to filter down and you're right you then have to go through it yourself and look at you know what areas you want to focus on and that may or may not be a zip code it could just be a a little corner of the of the county right yeah and, and we're definitely working on adding more but but obviously yeah we we, we do want to maintain our, our data sources and we're working on on building good relationships and building more ways um, to extract our data so that that's been the goal that's that's what's held us up for for so long we've been working on this for months and perfecting it but yeah, I'm definitely gonna make these changes. I, I appreciate appreciate you guys all all adding input. I'll get these changes within the next few days. And um, there's another call next week that the Sunder's gonna run. It's gonna be the same format as this. So if you have any more feedback, feel feel free to attend next Friday's call. All right, guys. Any other questions? Any other concerns? Yes, uh, what's your real name? Rylan. <laughs> I, I was telling Tom I'm the, the Sumner imposter on Discord. <laughs> trying trying to sell you financial advice. <laughs> yeah, my name is Rylan Loner. Um, I'm one of the admins in the Discord, so I'm I'm pretty actively in there. All right, guys. Well, I appreciate you you hopping on. Did, did somebody say something? No, no. It was just a, a silly comment. Thanks. Thanks for your time. Yeah, no problem. Hope you guys have a great weekend. Happy Friday. We'll see you next week. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks.